Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ag Innovation News Podcast, presented by the Agricultural Utilization Research Institute of Minnesota. I'm Dan Scogan, Director of Government and Industry Relations for EURI. Guests on the Ag Innovation News Podcast will shed light on innovations in value-added agriculture, highlight important voices and work that's being done throughout the Minnesota ag sector, and educate the public about resources and organizations that support Minnesota agriculture. Today, we get a chance to visit with Aaron Knutson. Aaron is Vice President of Food and Agribusiness in Lakeville, Minnesota with Compere Financial. With 15 years of experience in farm credit, he has expertise in lending to commercial food, fuel, and feed processing industries, as well as public financing for rural healthcare facilities. Aaron has a Bachelor of Science in Animal Science from Iowa State University. He earned his MBA from the University of Minnesota. Aaron's personal experience has had a strong influence on his dedication to serving clients and working with them to achieve their goals. Aaron Knudsen, welcome to the podcast today. Thanks, Dan. Uh, my first podcast, so hopefully it goes well. I know you're great to work with, having worked with you before, so I'm looking forward to it. As are we. Let's start with the big picture, and that is Compere Financial. What is Compere Financial all about, its mission, its purpose? How would you explain Compere Financial? Compere Financial is part of the farm credit system. We're an association within the farm credit system. That farm credit system, of course, has been around for over 100 years. And we are a cooperatively structured lender in the food and agribusiness space. We've got about a $30 billion balance sheet, and our borrowers are our owners. So when we make money and pay it out in patronage back to our borrowers that are directly eligible. So what's interesting about that is that Compere is a newly formed entity. We merged five years ago, Agstar. Badgerland Financial Services and First Farm Credit merged. They were all farm credit associations. They merged five years ago. And since then, we've grown our balance sheet to 30 billion, like I mentioned. And this year, we're going to hit the $1 billion payout in patronage. So we're focused on lending into the, the food value chain. We've got a group, as you mentioned, that does some construction financing for rural nursing homes and hospitals. And really, you know, our mission is to enrich agriculture in rural America. So we feel like rural vitality is important to those members that we serve. And we should be able to do, you know, lending into a lot of that space, financing into that, a lot of that space, just to not only serve those members, but from a lending perspective, but from an investment perspective, and then representing their interests in a legislative position as well. Aaron, where does Compeer serve? Are they kind of restricted to a territory or how are their uh, boundaries set up? Farm Credit Administration lays out territories for each association in the farm credit system. And our territory or local service area, which is we refer to it as an LSA, is most of Minnesota, large part of Wisconsin, and down in the northern tier of Illinois and along the, the Mississippi River there. So that's where we do most of our lending. On the core side, we have a core group of lenders that lends into the farming community, farmers directly, specifically. And they are the bulk of what we do. It's the bulk of what Compere does, lending into farmers in those territories. That's not to say we don't have loans elsewhere. We have other divisions in, within Compere, like the group I work for that you mentioned called the Food and Ag Business Group. And we do loans across the country where we are either participating in a, in a larger syndicated loan or participated loan, or we're leading those loans in areas that we have expertise in the ethanol space, for example. We are known as experts in the uh, ethanol space. We're known as experts in the swine production space, and we're known as experts in the dairy processing and dairy production space. While our local service territory is, you know, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Illinois, we do have loans throughout large parts of the United States. So we have partnered with other associations, other farm credit associations across the country. So we participate in loans for permanent crop producers, for example, in the Central Valley, all the way over to probably some fruit producers down in the Florida and East Coast region. Back to some of your earlier comments, Aaron, you know, you're talking about patronage dividends and the uh, profits of the Compere Financial going back to those who borrowed the money. And that's got to be a great story, not only for those who borrowed the money and put it to leverage their businesses, but also for the workers at Compere Financial. That's got to just feel good that you know that what you're doing is working. It does feel pretty good. And we're all excited. We've got a new CEO here, Jason Swag, just announced he became CEO and president of Comp here January 1st. He's bringing a lot of energy, a lot of ideas. We have a great executive team. We have a great 
board of directors, for example. So they all have great vision of where we can go and it's been working. We have a very strong balance sheet here at Compeer and they, they look at it as what can we do and what should, should we be able to do and give us a fair amount of inspiration to do those kind of things and come up with new ideas. So there's a lot of new things that we're doing relative to ag lending or finding new pathways to continue to enrich our service area. But we've also done some, you know, some lending and some construction lending in or financing, I should say, not straight up lending, but some construction financing in the rural housing, nursing homes and hospitals. And that's been really rewarding too. So if you can go into a rural area and find a nursing home that was literally built in the 50s or 60s and build a new nursing home facility that's got a main street type motif where you can go in and get your hair done or find a local general store within that nursing home versus the old cinder block nursing homes that they have in that, that were built in the 50s. The residents of those homes are a lot of times veterans have a real life changing experience moving from an older facility to something that's 50, 60 years newer. That was probably one of the most rewarding things I had been exposed to, just seeing some of the looks on people when, when they walk into these new facilities and, and their attitudes change. New chapels, really a nicer, newer facility, places to sit down and meet with family members that are easier, more comfortable. All those things, it was a pretty rewarding experience for me. Aaron, in your work with Compeer and really Compeer's mission, what would you say their role in the upper Midwest agriculture ecosystem is? Where does Compeer fit in the value chain of, of making agriculture better? That's a good question, Dan. You know, I think we fit along that full value chain. You know, we, we kind of tend to view agriculture as anything along that value chain. We focus in our, have more expertise in areas that are closer to the farm gate, but we finance prior to the farm gate farmers and post-farm gate processing facilities. But think about what we do in the ecosystem. We interact at, at all levels. Uh, legislatively, we interact. We have people on the swine producers boards, turkey producers boards or at least at the county level, we probably have some of that exposure, soybean growers. So really working on all those ecosystems, trying to engage and make the economy and our rural areas better and more vital. Other things we do is we do some investing through our equity funds that we are limited partners in. We don't do a lot of that in Minnesota because our other focus is really nationwide for the most part, but some of that investing has been done in Minnesota and in Wisconsin. And that's really exciting because we're investing through our venture funds. And they're not all venture funds. We have some venture funds, some growth funds, the vast majority of the funds that we invest in are growth oriented funds. But we do have a few venture funds that invested in new technologies that are aimed and focused specifically at improving healthcare for livestock, healthcare outcomes for livestock, and then technologies, robotics, making things more efficient, and then just overall efficiencies for farmers. In your opening comments, you talked about your three areas of expertise. Some of these loans must be huge. Do you also do some smaller lending? And are you typically the lead or are you working in partnership with other lenders? Well, it's really all of the above, Dan. We've got the ability to make smaller loans for young beginning farmers, immigrant farming. We've got a lot of really great programs to help people that, that move here and want to continue to farm. Smaller farms, vegetable farms. The Young Beginning Farmer Program is fantastic all the way up to the very large lending in large borrowers, right? So we've got a buy side group here that participates in large loans. You know, some of the very largest organizations in the country, they may be a billion dollar syndicated loan and we'll take a piece of that. And then and then the group that I'm in, you know, we'll lead some fairly large loans there as well, a couple hundred million dollars pretty easily. In the swine space, the dairy space, ethanol, renewable space, we have a full array of products and, you know, our board, and our executive committee is making sure that we're, we're using all those products the best of our ability, making good credit decisions along the way. Of course, Aaron, you know AUI a little bit, and we are all about value-added agriculture. Does Compere Financial get involved with a portfolio that has value-added ag entrepreneurs in them? I'd have to say yes. To get back to your other question about our ecosystem that we're playing, we certainly interact with AURI in the new uses forum, which hopefully we'll talk about later, and just sharing ideas. When it comes to value add, that's a pretty broad definition. We, we certainly provide financing for companies like ethanol plants that are adding value and have added a lot of value to corn farmers and corn producers. Trend line yield continues to grow. We find new uses for that corn crop and soy crop. So we're investing and lending into ethanol plants. We've lent into biodiesel plants. We're lending into renewable diesel plants across those lines. You know, if you start taking a look at some of the new, more venturous startup type focus. We don't really do a lot of lending into that space. That's really more of a position for some of our venture funds. But 
when it comes to value ag, you know, that's kind of the name of the game, trying to find new new areas to create value, capture value, and have competitive positions. And if, if a company can come forth with that, we can usually figure a way to structure some kind of lending out to that business and that ownership. You know, we're seeing a lot of new opportunities in the carbon space. We're seeing a lot of new opportunities in the plant-based space. All of those are value add. It's different segments of agriculture. And, you know, we're going to go where agriculture goes, but all of those different opportunities need to be vetted, made good credit decisions on those type of items, but those are opportunities for agriculture. Those are opportunities for processors, you know, upstream higher farm gate and downstream funding farm gate. And frankly, opportunities for farmers as well that may want to add value on the farm. We're seeing different products, you know, kind of come, come to market. We've looked at Kunza, talked to a few people that have had some experience with that. So those are opportunities that exist. Some of our farmers are going to be first mover and try to take advantage of being first movers and, and adopt some of those new technologies and new crops to find ways and get to the market and create some value for their farm. So we look at it a, a variety of ways and try to understand what the best opportunity looks like and, and be prudent in what we do. Well, I appreciate you teeing up the new uses forum, Aaron, because I want to go there next. But first, I want to remind our listeners that you are listening to the Ag Innovation News podcast presented by the Agricultural Utilization Research Institute of Minnesota. We're talking today with Aaron Knutson, the Vice President of Food and Agribusiness down in Lakeville for Compere Financial, with 15 years of experience in farm credit, and he has expertise in lending to commercial food, fuel, and feed processing industries. Aaron, we want to turn for a moment here to the uh, New Uses Forum that is coming up April 11th. A great example is Compere support for the New Uses Forum and how they get involved in the ecosystem. What is it about New Uses Forum that you particularly like or that kind of attracted Compere's attention? Well, there's a lot of things to like about it. You know, Dan, you generally are the host or the MC for that. So that's a good reason just to show up right there. But there's a lot of people that show up for that. So the networking is fantastic. You get to talk to people that are in late stage businesses. You get to talk to younger people. You get to talk to people with a lot of experience. You get to talk across the board, whether it's into plant-based, new sciences, new uses, economists, not just the networking too, but the panels are usually really good, really engaging, really interesting. And it's very educational. It's a fun program to be a part of. You know, I'm working on a panel this year, a representative from Compeer is going to moderate that, but we'll have folks on there, Farmer Mac economists, we're going to have somebody from Stonex to talk about interest rates, we're going to have our chief credit officer on there to talk about what he's seen, you know, recently and what, what to expect going into a recession, and then we're going to have a partner from McKinsey on there as well, so we're going to have a lot of expertise on there relative to the economics of agriculture and anywhere along that value chain. So a lot of resources there, a lot of knowledge, a lot of people there that have experience in understanding or vision of where different industries are going to go. So it's great networking. We also get to see some startup companies that you guys work with at AURI, which is great. You know, we get to see some popcorn company, I think, showed up. Smoothies was there a couple of years ago, but new ideas and, and entrepreneurs that come to that space. So we get to engage with that and see what the new technologies might be available or coming forward out of, you know, Minnesota's entrepreneur ecosystem. So it's really great and very broad group of people that come to that, but it's great to have those conversations and network and see where new ideas are popping up for, for agriculture. And I'm going to have a little more on how you can register for that at the end of this podcast, but let's talk a little more about Compere's role in the New Uses Forum. For one thing, AURI really values the fact that you're one of our uh, partners in putting the New Uses Forum on, Compere Financial. Yeah, well, we think there's a lot of value in the network. We help host and sponsor a lot of things. The New Year's and Swarm is fun because we get to work with AURI team. We've got a great team over there, scientists. And then we're also partnering with Georgetown University. Matt McKenna comes out and does a great job helping put this whole thing together. But getting Georgetown University to engage and take a look at what opportunities there are in rural areas for people in, in universities and other folks on the coast to kind of engage is really interesting because you get a little bit of cross-pollination in some of the conversations. It really was, Aaron, and, and I appreciate that. And I want to go back to the panel that you're putting together just a little bit, too, because I think I want our listeners today to understand you kind of rattled off some that you hoped you would be able to bring into the panel. The whole agenda isn't set yet, but certainly they're not only experts, but they have varying degrees of opinion or a thought process on egg finance. And I think people will really find it interesting to get those different perspectives. I hope it's going to be all the factors that will really, you know, impact 
farmers and how they're going to make decisions, entrepreneurs and how they're going to make decisions, general economics. Bill Moore has been with Compere for quite a while, and he's very knowledgeable. He speaks very well, and he's got insights into a, a wide variety of industries. We're talking to Farmer Mac about bringing in one of their economists. I've seen them present before at other conferences, and they do a great job too because of the way they approach understanding the opportunities, the metrics, the segmentation of the markets, where we've been and where we're going. They can really provide quite a bit of value. And then, of course, anybody from McKinsey is going to be pretty well-versed and knowledgeable and have a huge amount of resources at their fingertips. So I think the amount of knowledge we get from that group, not to mention Stone X, is on the interest rate side, is going to be hugely beneficial for anybody that attends. So I believe it's going to be a really good panel. Just a lot of information. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and, and typically uh, these panelists will hang around, and, and you talked about the networking piece just a little bit ago, but if you have a lingering question or maybe didn't get your question answered, you may have an opportunity to speak with one of these panelists and have some one-on-one -on -one interaction, and that's always good. Yeah, there's plenty of time structure in the new uses forum for giving people breaks and giving people a chance to get out and, and meet other people. And I always tell people if there's somebody they want to meet or they're interested in connecting with, I'm always willing to help do that. And, you know, it's not six steps to Kevin Bacon in agriculture. It's more like two. So if you're used to playing that game. So it's a pretty small world. So if people have questions, they want to learn more, you know, making those connections is usually pretty easy. And I'm always happy to help to do that. I know you are as well. Aaron, you work with people who need financing, obviously. Is that really the big unknown as somebody brings a, an innovative idea, maybe a new process or a new product forward? Is that the one piece that typically entrepreneurs, small businesses, large businesses have the least experience with? That's a good question. A lot of times if we're talking to entrepreneurs or engineers, a lot of times we'll come out of the engineering space and, and they've got an idea and that's great. That's how things, ideas come to light and, and new products come to market. But really, when we you know start talking to those folks, if they are engineers, for example, a lot of times you think, well, you know, I've done the engineering. That's the hard part. The business is the easy part. Well, that's not quite so. You know, you can say we'll put this together and that together, and things will just cascade. But business is pretty difficult. So we'll sit down with them. And we'll sit down with folks like you in the room as well and say, what's your product look like? You know, what is it going to take to get to market? What's your strategy? Do you have a business or do you just have a product? What does it take to go from a product to a business? What's your strategy to go to the market? What's your strategy for financing? And a lot of times we'll, we'll field those calls too right away because people think I've got to start a business. I need some capital. I'm going to call a lender. And frankly, if you're going to get a loan, that's going to be principal and interest and certainly interest. So if you've got a startup company, you're not going to be generating very much cash flow coming out of the gate, frankly. So you may not need a loan and equity might be the right structure for you versus a loan. In that case, we can always make referrals to different equity funds, venture funds, growth funds, whatever it might look like. So it's really a matter of trying to understand the management and how well they understand their product and how well they understand the marketplace, how big that marketplace is. What's the strategy for getting to the market? What's the strategy for being first? What's the strategy for building a moat? What's the strategy for keeping your competitors at bay? You know, and how much money is it going to take to do that? What kind of milestones are you going to hit? Is the technology feasible, right? Is it an idea? Has it been done at bench scale? Has it been done at large scale? You know, what does it look like at scale? How efficient does it work? Where is that market going to go? What's the competition from other industries? It gets pretty complicated pretty quickly. And that's where having the resources we have at the New Uses Forum and lots of different people to talk to could be really beneficial. Aaron, you just rattled off quite a checklist. So those entrepreneurs and small business people that are listening, I don't want to intimidate them, but there is a process of getting your ducks in a row when you're going to talk to a lender. Is that a fair statement? You want to get your ducks in a row talking to a lender, but you want to do a lot of industry and business research too, right? You want to get the engineering right, of course. I mean, that's the example I gave, right? You've got an engineer with a new idea that comes forth and says, I got the product, so I therefore I have a business. Now I just need the financing, so let's go talk to a lender. You guys have worked with some folks in the biological space, in bacterial space, that I've also talked to and said, you've got good traction, you've got good results, for example, in the poultry space. What does it really look like for you to grow out? And I think, you know, in some cases that may be a fit for some form of debt where you've got principal and interest, but may also be, just be a better fit for equity where it says, look, it's a little bit more patient capital. If there's no immediate demands on your cash flow, you can go out and create strategy and start going to market, selling and generating some cash flow, maybe develop that bulkhead strategy or beachhead strategy, I guess, rather to say, here's the buyers that we want at first so we can generate some cash flow, show that we've got some traction in the market, and then go out and raise another round, for example, before you're ready for, for senior debt and lending. Certainly lenders like us, we're pretty conservative, but we're going to be what the term is asset-based lenders. Generally, 
what we do is make sure that there's enough collateral and then we'll lend what we think that looks like. What's that collateral worth? What's it worth if it doesn't work out and lend something below that? So getting that capital structure right between the senior debt, potentially sub debt, preferred equity, whatever that looks like, takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of interaction and a lot of conversations. I'm going to give a site where you can register for the new uses forum. And if you don't get it the first time, I'm going to repeat it at the end of the uh, podcast today. But if you're thinking about the new uses forum coming up April 11th in the Minneapolis area, you can go to auri.swogo.com. That is S-W-O-O-G-O.com and a backslash N-U-F for new uses forum. 2023. And again, I'll repeat that registration site at the end of the podcast today because, uh, Aaron, I want to hold up two final questions for you. One is the future of Compeer, in your opinion, and then any initiatives and programs that are coming up that you would like to discuss. So let's start with your strategic vision for Compeer. Is the company, in your opinion, in a good place and poised to move forward and help people that are going to need financing in the next 10 to 15, 20 years? I think Compeer is in a great position. We've got a great board of directors, like you mentioned earlier. We've got great vision. We've got a great executive team. They've got great vision and provide great leadership. You know, willing to look at new ideas and where we can go and be flexible. You know, we're going to go where agriculture is going to go. We're willing to grow. We need to be able to flex and go where agriculture is going to go. Just basically be flexible and keep our mind open to those new opportunities because the delivery of those services is going to look different in the future. The delivery of those services certainly but we're going to have borrowers that want to have that delivery look different for each one of those. For example, older borrowers, they might want to still go in, write a paper check, you know, do things mainly just because that's what they're comfortable with. Whereas some of the younger farmers, for example, they may want to do everything digitally. They want to do everything on their phone while they're riding the tractor or the combine over the field. And that's fine. We have to be able to be flexible for that. And I think our board, our executive team recognizes that. We've got a strategy team put together here. They're, they're great. They do a wonderful job. So I think we're going to be well positioned to continue to be one of the leaders in agriculture lending, certainly well past the next 10 years. And then Aaron, short term, any initiatives or programs that Compeer is involved with uh, you can share with us today? Thanks for the reminder. We've got quite a few programs here. We've got organic transition program. We've got young beginning farmer program. We've got some immigrant type financing for people that are, you know, just coming here and looking, they want to continue some of their traditions and continue living and working in rural areas and working in the ag space. We work very closely with the USDA on nursing homes and rural hospital financing. So that's great. We've got our equity funds. You know, we can make referrals over our equity funds, whether you've got looking for growth capital or venture capital. I mean, the list goes on and on. We've got a great team here. We've got experts here that understand the industries that speak across the country. So if you really get something you're interested in learning more about, you know, feel free to call us. We've been visiting today with Aaron Knutson, the Vice President of Food and Agribusiness for Compere Financial down in Lakeville, Minnesota. Aaron, I just sincerely want to thank you for giving us your time today and all that great information. Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. I look forward to the new uses forum. I think it's going to be great. This year, we've got a really good looking agenda. And like I said, it's great to work with you and your team. You've got a great team there as well. I want to thank our listeners for joining us today as well and spending some time on the Ag Innovation News podcast, presented, of course, by the Agricultural Utilization Research Institute of Minnesota. Thanks to our podcast crew, Eric Evans, AURI Director of Communications, and Lisa Martinez, AURI Communications Coordinator and the editor of this production. I also want to remind you that registration is now open for AURI's New Uses Forum, which is coming up April 11th in the Minneapolis area. The Agricultural Utilization Research Institute, AURI, and its partners, Compeer Financial and Georgetown's Rural Opportunity Initiative, are bringing together some of the most knowledgeable voices in the area of finance, food, and agriculture. You can register right now at auri.swogo, that's S-W-O-O-G-O dot com backslash N-U-F 2023. And to learn more about AURI, visit our site at auri.org.